So right now, it seems like your move has taken two game ones. Game Empire has taken one. Blue black on blue black. How did they manage this? Well, what happened was Darwin almost always goes black. So your move games basically called an audible because, like, they were going to go with. They didn't plan it ahead of time. I talked to them. They said they didn't plan it ahead of time. But by the time Darwin had two heat rays and Kurt Bergner had committed to red green, they saw no reason to put black in the three seat. Good. Just like Darwin used two heat rays anyway. We'll just put black in the middle. They almost always have Darwin play black, but because they didn't want red-green against black anyway, they thought that's a bad matchup for the black deck, so they just shifted black into the middle. So what's the life totals in this game? Life totals are both 18 to 16. So fairly early. That Frexland Reclamation looks pretty good right yeah, now. Yeah, the Reclamation does look like a beast. Let's see. What are blue-black's ways to remove enchantments again? There's uh, Confiscate. Confiscate, yeah. I mean, there's a null, but that's odd. It's too late for a null. He could rescind a null. He could rescind a null. I don't think he has either of those cards in his deck, but he might have a rescind. Wow. Humphreys is not playing a Polluted Mire. He's not playing a Rewind. He's Why chosen would you not play Polluted Mire? Why would you not play Rewind in this deck? He's chosen to play both his Mental rewind. Disciplines. And he also left Whetstone in the sideboard. Because he's playing two Mental Disciplines, he can't win with Whetstone anyway, I think is part of the theory. So Whetstone's in the board. First pick overall. The first pick out of his pack, I believe. Comer's chosen to play his Rewind, but not his Fire Owl. Two Hollow Dogs, Frixing Goals, Scourge. Comer's the one with all the Flyers, right? The Ravenous Scourge. <laughs> the one answer Black Blue has to enchantments is dying. And then the enchantments get shuffled back into the deck. Thornwood Fairies, Vigilant Drake, two Kingfishers. Yeah, there's a lot of flyers in Alan Comer's deck. Sleeping Scourge. Dave Humphreys told me he actually counter-drafted incorrectly. He should have killed a uh, Kingfisher that went into Comer's deck. And instead, they, he took a twisted experiment. I see it. But he's out flyered. Like, Comer has Morsies. Yes, but Frexian Reclamation makes more flyers. Frexian Reclamation debaser seems pretty good against an army of Kingfishers. All right. So Humphreys is taking a little bit of damage. But he's got, I mean, Reclamation and a lot of mana has to be good. He's also got Ring of Gix in his hand. Oh, and he's got the Reclamation Sandbar Serpent card drawing engine. Cycle, bring it back. Cycle, bring it back. He's got to get that Ring of Gix to the play. Is he worried about Rewind? Has, oh, Rewind's in the graveyard. He's got to get that Ring of Gix to the play. What got rewound, I wonder? All right, so there's a 3-3 Broodlings. Raven? Raven Familiar was rewound. So now he's got to cycle this Sandbar Serpent. Run stuff. Or bring back Raven or Familiar. Or bring back Raven Familiar yeah. or Debaser. For, forget about the cycle card no, drawing engine. I, I didn't know there was a Raven Familiar in the side, in the would, what graveyard. Do Raven Familiar? I think he's better Raven off. Raven Familiar Reclamation is not bad. I think he's better off casting uh, Ring of Gex, though. He's got to stop taking damage if he wants this Reclamation to really... Yeah, he doesn't want to take a brutaling hit. That's certainly true. So I think he I, I would have cycled there. You get it you want land right now. You would rather just play a land and get your ring and to play, I think. Sandbar Serpent can block Frexian Brutaling, so you can just cast it. Or you can cast Ring Against. Sure. Now he's gonna have two mana up available to cycle or bring back another creature. What's in his graveyard? Is that a Denouncer, maybe? Is he going to cast that? He has that a debaser. Oh, he's going full echo. <laughs> so he, he wants a swamp here? What does he want? What does he want to draw? He's I think he wants fog bank. <laughs> yeah, he immediately takes the flying regenerating blocker. He just wants to set up a wall of defense so that he can warp Comer with card advantage. Comer does have a soul feast. How many blue flyers does Dave have? I see that Chime of Night. Ch Alan has a Chime of Night in his hand right now. 
wondering how useful that is in this matchup. Dave has a Peregrine Drake. A Raven Familiar. And a Kingfisher. Is that enough to play Chime and I mean, he's got... He can use it really well. He's got all these Broodling tricks. All right, do you echo Raven Familiar? Obviously, you echo Ring of Kings. If you echo Raven Familiar, you just end up jump blocking with it, don't you? I agree. I think you let Raven Familiar die. That way you can reclaim it back again a little bit. Meanwhile, you want to cast Fog and Nats and block the Hollow... That way you can block Hollow Dogs and Broodling, right? Fog and Nats blocks one ring and it taps the other. So echo the ring, play Fog and Nats. We're still, in, we're still in Humphrey's still up. Me. He's debating. Debating with the echo. He's got to decide what to echo and what land it's at. I, I think if he, if he echoes this Raven Familiar, all he's going to do is chump block. Hmm. Is that better than letting it die and casting Fog and Hats? It's really not that different. <laughs> it leaves you with less options. I, I can't picture him taking... Well, he could just take the three... I just don't see it being worth taking any damage. Darwin Castle, by the way, has won game two. He's now up two to zero against Kurt Bergner. So now the Raven Familiar dies. Darwin Castle had a really good matchup against Kurt Bergner. Darwin Castle had a uh, red-white deck that he said should never lose. What, did he just tap the Broodlings? Aren't they 4-4? Four, four? Oh, same thing, they're 5-5? Five, five? All right. Go. That would have been really random. Fog and Nats would have been... Well, he can't predict Chime Knight, but... Why can't he predict Chime Knight? It's Rochester draft. He shouldn't have the Chime Knight in, in theory, possibly. He's got like three or four blue creatures. Oh, Seven Nightshade's a good draw. Yeah, Seven Nightshade's pretty good. So now he sends the dog, sent the broodlings, get rid of those things. I still think he should have let Raven the player die and play Fog and Ash. I agree. You've definitely got card advantage. I still think he should have cycled Sandbar Serpent a hundred years ago. <laughs> he knew he was never going to cast it. Dave Humphreys just always has a lot of cards in his hand. Doesn't yes, matter does. what format. I mean, Alan recognizes that he has to play for the short game. Humphreys is just trying to stabilize and win in the long game. Meanwhile, Comer is just Dave, put my creatures, tap them all David Humphreys, more so than any other player in professional magic, has never played beatdown. <laughs> Ever. So what has he sent? I think you got to get rid of that broodling. He's annoying. Yeah. Does, 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 does Comer have to hold off everything else? Does Comer have disease carriers? Yeah, he's got disease carriers in his deck. You got to get rid of that broodling. It's annoying. And then you get rid of the ghoul later. I don't know. He lost so much card advantage by echoing that Raven familiar, taking five to the head when you have reclamation in play. I mean, he got Chime Knight out of Alan's hand, but. Chime and I would be useless if he just